You have to be authentic. The interesting thing is to stay with lifelong learning. To solve this big problem of the future generations, it will take lots of engineering resources. Welcome to the Swiss Made Success. Today we have a very special guest from Germany. We have a VR engineer. His name is Erwin Schnell. And we actually met in a really, really special occasion because uh, we play music together. That's it. And when I met him deeply except of making music, I thought that uh, his story and his life career would be a great inspiration for many, many people. So that was the moment when I proposed him to do this interview. And his, his career and his CV actually is, is really, really rich. He'd been working for Siemens, for uh, many, many other big players in the field of virtual reality and engineering. He'd been to USA, here in Zurich, in Germany, everywhere around the world. And it's a real pleasure to have you here, Erin. Thank you very much, Erin. Maybe you can bring us back how this passion for, for engineering started. Where did you get this? It started uh, mostly uh, in the wish to become a pilot. And uh, that time there was the oil crisis and I passed the test, but I did not succeed in, in getting into Lufthansa at that time. And so I decided to become an engineer mm -hmm. and, you know, most engineers, they played with Lego when they were kids and that was me too. I was a big Lego player. And so finally I started to study aerospace technology, aerospace engineering, and I passed the studies, my engineering degree in 1985 and st then started to work in development engineering, first uh, for automotive and then for a lot of other fields like aircraft, spacecraft, machinery, even processing engineering. And uh, f when I was in, in my job at about uh, four years, uh, there was digitalization coming up and the first uh, software was coming out to simulate flows. Wow. And I thought, well, this is, it's always good to start uh, uh, an area of engineering right from the beginning, right from the roots. And this was right the, 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 the best point to start with. Uh, with simulation because mm -hmm. the software was already capable for a lot of uh, physics and a lot of uh, yeah, technologies in, in, in computer te technology and uh, so I started in 1989 it's uh, 30 years from, from that time now. Mm -hmm. so I'm working for 30 years in, in uh, digitalization and simulation and I try to, to look at all the different developments. I try to be up to speed all the time. And I try to take all the opportunities, the new technologies provided that time. Yeah. And if you think about the development of the computer technology since 1985, it's, it's amazing. When I left university, uh, it was the, the computer filled a whole floor. Mm -hmm. in the building and today this type of computer is uh, underneath my desk and you even have a, a very good uh, performance of your iPhones and iPads so exactly computer technology is, 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 is it's skyrocketed and it's, it's still developing like one smartphone can go faster now than a whole room of the best university back in the days, right? That's the way it is, yeah. And it's amazing. And this is uh, what keeps me up to speed. And I'm still progressing. I'm still learning. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good uh, good point to say here uh, for 
the next generations. The most interesting thing is to stay life with lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if you think you know everything, you stop learning. And this is, this is very dangerous. And uh, from that point, uh, when, I walked from, when, I, when I went by bike from the office uh, home to Newmarket to my flat on Friday, I was watching a demonstration of the, of the young kids for climate yeah, and they are very loud and they are very eager to tell things they think that's fine it's it's really fine but i don't think we will uh we will really come to to a solution of this really big problem uh, by just making noise I think to solve this big problem of the future generations, it will take lots of engineering resources. Experts. Right? It will take specialists, experts. Specialists. And it doesn't make sense to, to study politics or social science or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have to bring out lots of engineers and scientists during the next decades, mm -hmm. because otherwise we will not solve these problems. And I understand the young generation because I, I still have problems as well to understand what's going on and to understand what politics is doing because I have two kids, mm. so I'm a family father and I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about the future of my kids. So uh, I told them, go into science. Mm -hmm. And my son is doing his PhD in chemistry right now. Exactly. I would like to touch on this. Yeah. On this, on this later, can you maybe bring us back to when you were a kid and then you, you had this dream of flying? Yancy told me this story, and that was amazing. If you go through life, yeah, uh, then uh, you always see opportunities. Mm. Right and to the left and to the right, you always see your opportunities, and you have to consider which way to go. And my first inspiration when I was a very young kid. Um, I saw all the planes taking off right mm -hmm. in front of my window mm -hmm. where I was sitting on my, at my desk and, and doing my homework for mm -hmm. school. And so the planes took off right in front of the window. It was about uh, one or two kilometers away, so I could see them, them very good. Mm -hmm. And so the dream came up uh, to become a pilot. Wow. And I, I, I really directed my whole education uh, to this goal, yeah, to become a pilot. And uh, I did my military services. You had to do that time. Yeah. Uh, because it was obligatory to be accepted for the test. And I remember it was the first time I flew in my life when I flew to Hamburg, really to, to, to go to this test and... Uh, it was the first time I flew and uh, I said, hey, it would be nice to fly in the cockpit. And so I waited in front of, before entering the cabin, I waited and asked the purser, hey, uh, could I probably fly on the jump seat? That's the, the third or the fourth seat. That time it was the mm -hmm. fourth seat in the, in, in the cab, in, in the, on the flight deck. And uh, he said, okay, let's ask the captain. And that time it wasn't a problem at all. So I, I said, I go to the Lufthansa test in Hamburg and mm -hmm. to, for a pilot test. And, and the captain said, oh, feel free to come in. And so wow. the first flight I had in my life, it was already in the cockpit. And I I've tried to keep that up. And, and that time it was pretty easy to, to fly in the cockpit. So... The lesson that we can take in this history, because uh, I like when you tell all these uh, anecdotes and histories. Say you went straight away, you had no fear to ask, hey, can I stay with the pilots? Even it was your first flight and you didn't know these people. Yeah. But you had the courage to say, let me try it. That's what I you, did. You were not shy. like No. So we would say the, the road to excellence actually takes some courage and with shyness it's going to be harder. Sure. Uh, one thing is you have to be absolutely communicative mm -hmm. and uh, you have to be open to other people and 
I say, okay, why, why not? Yeah, why, why, why should I hold back myself? Yeah, uh, and be shy. It's, it's mm -hmm. better to, to really approach people mm -hmm. in a direct way, mm -hmm. so they know which person they have in front of them, mm -hmm. and they exactly can tax you. Yeah, because you tell them, hey, that's me. Yeah, don't be shy. Yeah, I'm, I'm communicating to you. Mm -hmm. I'm interacting. Yeah, and most of the most of the the contacts uh, you really can see in advance because you you see the person you're approaching and you think okay this is this is really worth to approach because the, the person is also open yeah she shows uh, some, I go I go a little with the feeling like you follow a little your gut or yeah you th you I, think, I think I call it human chemistry yeah? and mm -hmm. it's, it's like like the elements some some elements they form to molecules and whatever some atoms they form to molecules and they attract each other and each other and I think uh, in, in human behavior you have this attraction as well. In our life, we, we live uh, a total polarization. Yeah? We live between good and bad, we live between cold and warm, between night and day. So our whole life takes place between, be, between uh, singularities, mm -hmm. yeah? between extremes. And, and as well, human communication is, is, is in the same manner of these extremes. Yeah? You find people uh, you, you think, okay, it's a very sympathetic person, or uh, this person is a little shy. She she closes up when you approach her, or him. And uh, so I think uh, you have to sense it. Mm -hmm. So keep up your sensitivity when you go through life. Yeah, just look at the people. Yeah, just smile at them. Don't yeah. don't don't go through life in, in angry and and say. What's going on there? I don't like that. Yeah, be be positive. So positive. Yeah, because mm -hmm. a smi a smile you give creates a smile back, yeah? mm -hmm. and so you interact and and so you you start communi communicating with people, and always be very sensitive. Yeah, look at the things happening around. Look mm -hmm. at the stuff lying around. Look at notes. Yeah, look at books other people are reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at all that stuff. Exactly. That's where I wanted to to bring you because you told me one time how much curiosity yeah. been helping you in your career and in your life in general. How important was that in, in your... Well, there, when I go through my life, I think the two main drivers uh, is one thing, it's curiosity. Mm -hmm. It's always uh, the, the will uh, to look behind mm -hmm. the things. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's always the aim to look behind the things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is to be visionary. Visionary. Yeah. You have to have your visions because um, Albert Einstein said, okay, visions are more important than knowledge because knowledge is limited. Yeah. Okay, we still find new things, new laws in nature, new physics laws. So it's, it's still growing, but somehow knowledge, if we know everything, then knowledge is, is, is really limited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, Visions are never limited because you can have your visions and you can have to follow them and then you try to realize you really you try to make it real somehow. Yeah, and my vision was always to make an imprint and to say, okay, this is this is my baby. I did this yeah, and and I developed that and 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 I I really brought science or engineering a step further. You created something. Yeah, and and so the thing is to be productive. Yeah and to be creative mm -hmm. and, uh, and a very very uh, important driver to be creative is, is really a vision mm -hmm. uh, you have your visions and you follow up and you, you go to the to the maximum yeah and another thing is uh, if you have your expectations to yourself uh, i think it's not enough to to always bounce to your to your level to your limit it's, it's, it's always necessary not just to go up to the limit. It's always very important to go a little bit across the limit, over the limit. Yeah, yeah I would like to go a little deeper on that. Maybe you have some example that you would like to share. Well, for example... Yeah, the thing is, when, when I do uh, solutions for engineering problems, yeah, I know exactly this is what I can provide up to now. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you always have to put a little pressure on yourself and to say, okay, 
uh, I have the vision that this is possible as well. And from my knowledge, it should be possible as well. And so you have always to put yourself a little bit under pressure and say, okay, okay. I, can, I can do it. I can go there. Because the, really thing, the, the real thing to grow, if you would like to grow yourself, you always have to push against the limits and to push a little bit over the limit. If you get it, you get the next step and then you can say, okay, I made it. And you, you get some self-confidential uh, behavior. Yeah, yeah you, you, you get self-confidence. Yeah, it gives you some, uh, that self-image and self-confidence yeah. grows every time you do something yeah. more than what already exists. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's the way to really uh, push yourself forward to, to grow. I, I don't like the word push, really. I think it's a grow. Yeah, it's growing. Is, is it more maybe pulled from passion yeah. instead of push? It's, it's, it's driven. Uh -huh. you, you can say it's yeah. driven it's by driven. passion mm -hmm. and driven by visions mm -hmm. yeah, that you would like to, to be better mm -hmm. than the rest. Yeah. Yeah, somehow it's it's not in, in in terms it's not like I don't feel a competition in that. Way. Yeah, I don't feel a real competition. We have to teamwork, yeah, and and the specialists have to to together look to the front, yeah, and 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 to to organize themselves and to influence themselves and to to exchange experiences, because if you think about uh, knowledge. Uh, grows mm -hmm. by sharing yes so if you share your knowledge mm -hmm. yeah it will really grow yeah it, it will multiply since internet came up i think the knowledge like took a spike right yeah it's unbelievable i i, I read the book uh, uh short answers to to big questions yeah of stephen hawking and and uh, it's, it's amazing if you go through this book, uh, mm. it, it tells you a lot about uh, skyrocketing. Uh, we have the, the biological uh, evolution mm -hmm. yeah? and this takes place very slowly. Yeah? In, in 10,000 years of written history, we have one bit per year in increase of information in our DNA. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the increase of information during just the last, let's say, 10 years, yeah, it's, 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 it's orders of magnitude that we have as an information increase because we are the ones that brought out the language. Mm -hmm. We brought out to write down our knowledge and to pass it on to the next generation without involving our DNA. So we have the biological evolution mm -hmm. and we have the information evolution. And compared to biological evolution, uh, the, the information evolution really skyrocketed yeah. during yes. the last 20, 30, 50 years. Yeah. That's really it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and even in my profession, in my uh, special little laboratory i can't follow all the inf all the books yeah. and all, all all the new articles that have been published during the last weeks it's yeah? impossible it's impossible yeah. so you, you you have to specialize mm -hmm. more and more and, and and this will become very difficult during the yeah. next decades yeah. yeah yeah that's why we're making maybe machine learning and stuff so yeah. it can help us somehow yeah hopefully yeah they don't take over. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope so as well. Yeah, we, we will give some, some responsibilities to machines and yeah. to, to self learning systems, to, to artificial intelligence and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, the, 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 big, uh, the big thing will be how to, to really get uh, in, keep in touch with them. And, and to, we don't lose to integrate, uh, yeah. to integrate these machines and yeah. don't lose our humanity. Yeah, and that we don't lose uh, the connection. Yeah? Uh -huh. So uh, at least we'll be, be governed by machines. I would like to go back to the story. You, we said when you fly, you've been flying to Hamburg. Yeah. And then you wanted to be a pilot. 
Yeah. So something went on the way, and then you changed kind of mission, no? Yeah. Then from there, uh, something else happened. Then you became engineer. That's it. Can you can you take us a little on that story, and then maybe you can share all the troubles that you did because you told me you've been uh, to the U.S. Yeah. That was really pretty fascinating story also. Yeah, well, it's always the same thing. Yeah, you meet people and you you sit in front of that of that commission, yeah, mm -hmm. telling you, okay, because of the oil crisis, uh, we are not able to hire you for for the pilot training. Yeah, and then you sit there and. Uh, you see your dream collapse. Yeah. And then you say, okay, that's how, it. How Cut. Did you, how did you react to that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not very uh, angry, emotional. So I, I took it as an information yeah, mm -hmm. because it was not because of my own setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. I passed the test yes. till the last day. Okay. So it was uh, some some condition that that really uh, did not uh, let me become a pilot. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And then there was a psychologist, yeah, and and he saw that I was uh, really um, down that uh, in that minute, yeah. And he told me, "Oh, don't worry, yeah, and because uh, from from looking at the results of your technical tests, yeah, I really would recommend uh, to you to become an aerospace engineer." Wow, yeah, that was amazing. First thing that the fact that you had. Some some help in that moment, no? Yeah. Somebody yeah, sustained you guys. Somebody told me an alternative. Yeah, and then gave you a solution. Yeah. So props to the system in that case. That's it. But also your own reaction that you said, wow, let me take this, let me see this suggestion that is closer possible to my mission or to my dream, no? That's it. And so I said instead of flying uh, airplanes, probably I go into designing airplanes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this made me very hopeful right in that moment. So it was a very good help. Yeah. So I did not uh, fall into the deep black hole. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I thought now the dream's gone. So what will happen now? And uh, this, this guy already showed me a backup position. Right? That's and, great. Uh, coming home, I put all together my notes and my, my, um, uh, I took out all my documents and the uh, accreditation, and so I immediately I signed up right for university in Stuttgart. No losing time. Pum, pum. No losing time. Pum, pum. And uh, I started in 1977 mm. uh, with my studies, and then I thought, okay, it's it's always good uh, to keep in touch with reality. Yeah. Not just uh, be the theoretical guy. Mm -hmm. I always like to be a little practical, and so I, when I did my my uh, my diploma work and my uh, we had to do a, a a study work before the diploma work, uh, and I decided to do that in a practical way. So I I worked in the wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I worked in the acoustics lab of, of Daimler, Daimler Chrysler, the Mercedes Benz, Daimler Chrysler wow. at that time. And it was very, um, in, uh, very inspiring. And uh, I thought, okay, all these uh, measurements and all these experiments, yeah, probably they can be done uh, sometime digitally. Mm -hmm. And so I specialized already on theoretical aerodynamics during my studies. And finally, when I, I worked two more years at university in, in the wind tunnel, and it was very inspiring. It was very, uh, I got a lot of experience. And today it helps me a lot, uh, really, to break the digital work down to some real experiment, to some real stuff. Yeah, where you, if, for example, when you have to verify or plausibilize, plausibilize, plausibilize. Uh, when you have to verify uh, your your CFD results, your your simulation results, it helps you a lot to have some practical experience in, yeah. the, in the background. Okay. Yeah, and from there uh, it went step by step. Yeah, I took every every chance I had. Uh, from the first. Uh, company I started with was a cooling company yeah, doing radiators and heat exchangers mm -hmm. and I started digital work there, digital engineering I started there 
and introduced the software there. And then I got ch the chance to go to a more um, broader engineering office with, with mm -hmm. a lot more different uh, fields like machinery, like uh, aerospace engineering. And uh, this was a company of about 40 people that time. And after that, uh, I decided to move up to a bigger company. Sorry, was that in Germany? That, that was time? back in uh -huh. Germany that mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it was in the Stuttgart area. Mm -hmm. And I had my first group uh, in that engineering office was about nine people. Mm -hmm. And then I, I moved up to the next level, uh, 15 people. And from there, uh, I started to have my uh, own office and uh, with about 15 people as well. So I took most of the staff I had and then the company wow. I took with me in my, in, in the, it, it was a branch of, of, a, of another company I opened in Stuttgart. It was a engineering office mm -hmm. for South Europe. And then the company was sold because it was private owned. The company was sold and I decided to go to a bigger company back again. So I went back to automotive, to radiators, heat exchangers. Uh, I went to Modin Europe. And what was a good move because uh, that was the chance to go to the US for two and a half years. And when they offered me that, uh, that so how, how, how that happened, like this occasion, like it was casually or? Well, the thing is, uh, if you work for an international company, uh, uh, they like it that you work in the headquarter for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so I was working, uh, we went to 05, so I was working four years at Modi in Europe. And then I got the call to the US mm. and it you was... You say this guy is good, this German guy is good. Yeah, it was based on my work I did uh -huh. that time because I did uh, digital uh, mock-ups for cars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the prototypes, they they were pushed back and the, pro the, the, the real prototypes, they were built up digitally. Mm -hmm. And I did that for automotive industry, uh, for, for limousines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the headquarter in Racine, uh, they of Mo the Modine headquarter in Racine, they were specialized on trucks. Racine is which state? Racine is Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin. Uh, one and a half, two hours from Chicago, between Milwaukee and wow. Chicago. Wisconsin, very cold there. <laughs> what a change! No, I mean, of course, it Big went change. from cold Germany, but. How was like, how did your life change? Because uh, you took your whole family with you, right? Yeah, the whole family went so, with me and it was a family decision. So we moved from our house in uh, close to Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. We moved into a house in Racine and everybody told us, don't rent, try to buy it. Mm -hmm. and so we bought a location where the four of us really could feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So we went there as a family and we decided as a family to buy exactly this house mm -hmm. because all four of us, we said, oh, that's it. We want to go there. So that's really important, for example, for some motivation because you're talking about teamwork now, right? Yeah, that's family so, teamwork. Yeah, so you took the whole family and you said, no, I'm not going to decide, but I will see everybody. We're going to see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would like to see everybody happy, not because mm -hmm. daddy gets a job there and will be happy. Yeah. So the whole family should be happy. And we got a nice little township there and we got nice neighbors. And mm -hmm. as we're a communicative family, we, we really adjusted pretty fast. Yeah, so we, we moved over directly in the house. So we stayed about maximum five days in the hotel. Even though our container was did not arrive, yeah. yeah. So we just had the 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 things in the in the suitcases and in the in the aircraft in the air container, yeah, which was very limited, limited stuff on the air. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved into an empty house. Mm. Okay, kitchen was equipped. There was or was all right, uh, but uh, our cutlery and porcelain <laughs> and we had to buy and we bought it. I remember that very well because we the first thing I, I don't do any any marketing stuff here but we went to a 
very famous uh, store uh, there, which is uh, very international. And we bought a huge king size bed there. And we slept in that bed by all four. The kids were little. Yeah? <laughs> and so we had that huge king size bed for the first four to six weeks. And it was very, very cool improvisation. Yeah. Uh, same thing happened be before we went out of the house. Because two weeks before we, we flew over, uh, the movers were in our house and took everything out. You sent everything by container. We sent everything by container. So we, we slept on the floor for two weeks. And, yeah. and uh, we had, we had that, exactly that time, we had guests from the US. <laughs> they slept, Perfect. They slept as well <laughs> on the floor. And so it was cool improvisation. But it, it, it brought us closer than, 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 than everything else. Yeah? If you go through situations like that. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? It, it, it really ties you together. It yeah. bonds together these kind of even quote, uh, quote, quote, hard experiences or a little yeah. tougher, no? Yeah. That's what they create more bond and... Well, the thing is, uh, you, together. you learn much more from from your failures yeah, and from uh, than from success. Yeah? Success gives you a very good feeling, but uh, mistakes really bring you forward. You really learn if you if you are able to accept that and to learn from your mm -hmm. mistakes. Yeah. yeah, and so we spent a wonderful time in the U.S. The kids went to Prairie School and they had a huge experience there. It was it was amazing how they mm -hmm. developed. That was really I could see it on the horizon because in our township I could see <clears throat> that a lot of people tried to sell their houses. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, hey, what's going on there? So you were aware of what's going on? I, I, I sensed it. Was it 2007, 2008? Or it was at the beginning of, of 2007. Oh, okay. So you were a little I, I was visionary, a, let's say. At, I looked at that and mm -hmm. I said, okay, what's going on there? There must be a reason for that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, we have to get rid of our house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. immediately. And as we had very good communication, uh, the neighbor sensed, uh, this would be a good house. Yeah, my wife likes it, and mm -hmm. his family was growing, and his house across the street was too small, and his wife really liked our house mm -hmm. very much. Yeah? Yes, and so he, one one evening in, in I think it was in, in May. May time frame, he came over and he said, "Okay, well, what about you?" Because he knew that we would go back to Germany. Mm -hmm. And then he said, okay, what's your, your schedule? Uh, what's your time frame? When, what time will you go back to Germany? And I said, okay, this could be pretty soon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and he said, okay, I would like to buy your house. And sensing these sale signs mm -hmm. in our township uh, on almost every property, uh, or lots of properties, yeah, I said, oh, you can buy it right now. Oh. The only thing we have to stay in until we move back. And so everything went duck, 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 yeah? because I was relocated, Ban Modin, mm -hmm. beginning of June. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, within 90 days, you have to go back to Germany. Zack. Zack. I said, I know that. Lufthansa test. All crisis. Now we have financial crisis. Yes. Yeah? And I said, okay, what to do? I sold the house and we had tenants in our house back in Germany. Mm -hmm. That was pretty smart, sorry if I interrupt you. Yeah. So you, that was a smart move, no? But how, uh, the, the house in, in USA, did, did you make the same or could you profit a little, talking I, about financially? I could profit that much because we did some renovation mm -hmm. yeah? and so it was break even. I okay. sold it uh, okay. for a little more okay. than I bought it. But you did the renovation, so? Yeah. yeah. Then we organized our way back. Mm -hmm. And finally, mm -hmm. uh, in I think it was around March, uh, March time frame, mm -hmm. 2008, we moved back into our house. After renovation. Awesome. After renovation. And then it was hard to find a new job. Mm. Because uh, okay, now uh, now the challenge is 
are coming like maybe yeah is was this a hard time for you like or well i i'm always positive you know and uh, i'm always uh, in in good hope yeah so i i always think there will come a solution yeah? and and i'm working on that solution okay. and i'm looking for that solution okay. so you're looking for solutions all the time. i'm looking for mm -hmm. solutions in 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 terms of my my professional work as well as in, in private uh, things i'm always looking for solutions mm -hmm. And so I um, really got a contract. Uh, I was uh, was two or eight, so I was already end of fifty. And it was hard to become a job. Yes. Yeah. And I wrote about uh, 70, 80 applications. Just few uh, said thank you, and the rest mm -hmm. I never heard anything. Mm -hmm. And so there was one offer, and I took it. Yeah. And I said, okay, I have a job now. And it was in my field. It was in, in computational fluid dynamics. Okay. Just with another software. But I said, okay, it's, it's good to know about that software as well. So yes. you can really compare. You have a broader knowledge. And mm -hmm. yeah, I worked for that company for a year. And the, the company was almost about to go down the drain. Yeah, so they... <laughs> They laid off people as well. But you took the challenge. But so I took the challenge to go there, to work there. And uh, yeah, this job brought me to Detroit and brought me to, to all over the globe. Yeah. And I worked a lot for aircraft industry. I worked a lot for, for, uh, for sports car uh, industry. And after a year, I was laid off and I called Switzerland. Uh, and within two weeks, uh, I had a job in Basel. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing, my profession, computational fluid dynamics and just another field yeah, in the building services, in the building industry. Uh, CFD was not known very well there. And can, you, can you explain us what is CFD? For us human beings, then. CFD is computational fluid dynamics. Okay, awesome. It means theoretical digital aerodynamics. So you solve the physics uh, in the computer. Mm -hmm. You model your structure, whatever you're investigating. Mm -hmm. It's modeled using uh, CAD tools, computer aided design tools. Okay. And uh, then you take over the, the digital design and then you do your flow investigations there. You can, you can imagine it's, it's something like a digital wind tunnel. Yeah. yeah okay. It's like a, a wind tunnel in the computer. And so I started doing uh, computational fluid dynamics for the building industry. And it's a huge market. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm still with uh, in, in the building industry, but I do a lot of uh, automotive stuff as well. And uh, even uh, machinery and things like that, turbines and heat exchangers. So. The broad, still the broad uh, field of, of computational fluid uh, dynamics. And then um, after six years in Basel, the next move came and uh, the call came from Zurich. And I looked at the company, again, small, 40 people, HBI, Herter, AG, and small company, company, very, very good people, very high educated, very specialized. And since four years, I'm in Zurich now. Amazing, and, amazing. Yeah. And a year ago, I met this guy over here. <laughs> it was a year ago. And, uh, oh, around one year ago, yeah. Summer 2018, yeah. Yeah. So whenever Definitely. you would like to listen to us, uh, Sam's Pizza Land in Zurich uh, would be the place to go. Switzerland for everybody around the world. Hopefully this video will have some, some clicks around the world. So if you come to Zurich, you can actually not only view our interview, but you can see us live. <laughs> yeah. On guitar <laughs> and on wires. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, how important was communication and, and networking like for you're a really open person to to get known to others to get information mm -hmm. you have to be communicated mm -hmm. and communication is where is is the one thing we exchange uh, knowledge we exchange uh, experiences and to me uh, interaction with people 
is is very important, very important. Uh, even I think what's a little in the background today because we have Skype, we have Team Viewer, yeah, we have the, all that electronic stuff to 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 meet. Yeah, we have. Uh, phone meetings, we have uh, internet meetings, uh, we have meeting rooms, chat rooms. Uh, um, I think personal interaction is still one of uh, one of the important things to to really quickly access your 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 counterpart. Yeah, to really access it to to to, to exchange experience, it's very efficient. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm I'm used to. I had a, I have. Two, three, four, five Skype meetings, team viewer meetings a week. Oh wow! Yeah, just because we're also way working on some projects in Australia and in Göteborg in Sweden. And yeah, if you're used to it, yeah, it's it's a very good just to exchange technical information. Mm -hmm. It's it's very good, but to really get known to each other, you have to go there. Yeah, you have to meet the people in person. You have really to to show yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to experience the other one. Okay. So how how important was that for you? Like, uh, do you have may, maybe some example that you could that comes to mind where you, for example, you networked, yeah. and then a possibility came out, like maybe a work <laughs> possibility or yeah, that, that's a very good possibility. It's it's a private, uh, it's a private. Uh, it was a private opportunity, mm -hmm. but it led to, to a professional change. Of the girlfriend of our son, <laughs> and so I was riding the train. I'm, I'm going by train because I, I would like to be very uh, caretaking for our climate, so I don't go by car because I'm wow. traveling back and forth uh, Stuttgart Zurich every weekend. Wow! And I go by train, and on the train I said uh, the same location. I said uh, opposite to to a lady, and she was working yeah, and. I was a little uh, looking there and a little curious. Yeah, I was curious. Answer. Yeah, I was curious, and, and I saw. Okay, she was a pharmacist, mm -hmm. and I saw a, a, a paper of the pharmacist association in, in Zurich, and the girlfriend of our son, she's a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And that time, our son decided to to do his PhD in Zurich. And I knew that they will definitely move to Zurich. Mm -hmm. And as she was a pharmacist from Germany, from Germany, uh, from Munich, from Munich, yeah. And as she was a pharma pharmacist, I thought, oh, it's good, probably to network a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like the mind is already thinking possibilities, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Possibilities, possibilities, and so. Uh, she was working, so I, I couldn't disturb her. Yeah. And I, I knew that uh, our son's girlfriend already had a position. Possibilities. Yeah. She already had a job. Mm -hmm. But I said it's always good to have connections. Yeah. And so uh, finally, shortly before Zurich, yeah, before the train stopped in the, in the main station, she was collecting all her stuff. She was packing together. And... Uh, then I asked her, "Oh, you're a pharmacist, and, and you're you're," uh, and she said, "Yes, I'm I'm the head of uh, the pharmacist association in Zurich." And uh, I said, "Oh, that's that's interesting because our son's girlfriend, she's a pharmacist, mm -hmm. and they will move to Zurich in December. It was uh, somehow October or around that." Mm -hmm. And. Uh, she said, oh, interesting, I give him my business card. And so we change, exchange business cards. Eh? And uh, our son and his girlfriend moved and she started working and she was not very happy. So she took out the business card and she got in touch with, with, with a lady. This person. Yeah. And she said, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm, it's good that you call because I'm thinking about buying another pharmacy and I need some staff for that. And uh, so uh, I will keep you posted. And today she's the head of that pharmacy. So she's leading this pharmacy she's, now. Wow. She's running, leading this, this pharmacy. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, that's a great example of... Yeah. That's Connecting, networking, networking, not being shy, yeah. going for it. 
same thing with uh, you always meet people uh, for example we we had some trouble with uh, with contracts in in Australia yeah and I'm, I met a guy who lived uh, in Sydney for a couple of years yeah? and he said oh, I know a lot of people there and uh, I can help you, mm -hmm. you know, with that uh, with that project and that's it how you this is uh, how life works this is how the world works yeah if you really Look for your chances, look for possibilities, look for opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, uh, real opportunities. Mm -hmm. I say not, 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 uh, there are some tricky people, yeah, they, you call it opportunists. Opportunists. Yeah, opportunists. Okay. And, and this is, uh, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Oppor taking opportunity is not being an opportunist. Yeah. Taking the opportunity means to know myself to know the expectations, to know if I'm able to fulfill that, and then I will take that. Okay. Yeah. And I will not be tricky or, or whatever. Yeah. I will be honest, serious, and say, okay, that would be my thing, what you're offering here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's always the same. Uh, if, you, if it comes from your heart, yeah, if you really take it serious, mm -hmm. if you are honest people can feel that because mm -hmm. then you, you you really make a, a very authentic uh, impression in in that case so the uh, people can can feel the real deal yeah so. yeah you have to be authentic that mm -hmm. that people really can say okay th this guy is reliable mm -hmm. i rely on this guy mm -hmm. and if he says the project is done by that day it's got to be done. It's got to be done. To earn the respect. I had, yeah, that's it. And to earn the re reputation. I tell you, I had project, I had projects, I was working 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. So... To, to really finish. Yeah, okay, so... Yeah. Just to say, okay, I promised, mm -hmm. I told you this date where the project will be done, and then it will be done. And if I have to work 24 hours to, to really get it done by the timeline I proposed, I have to do it. Yeah, you were telling me about sometimes you had to work really hard, like sometimes maybe hours for yeah. days, hours yeah. and hours. So um, how could you balance, let's say, maybe other people can take some inspiration, well, the work life, work life and... and family time if you're a lucky guy then you love your job mm -hmm. and then it's uh, then it's not too difficult to to create a good little life work balance mm -hmm. but uh, a really strong backup position is your family so if your family is working nicely and everybody's happy and you love your kids you love your wife and uh, you love your home this is a very good uh, main step into work-life balance. And the other thing is, if you like your job, if you love your job, then it mm -hmm. gives you a lot back. And beside all the technical stuff, all the theoretical physics and maths, you have to do a little uh, creative thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You have to do, for example, I paint, I play guitar, um, I do craft work, art work, uh, and, and, and whenever I'm home, uh, and luckily my wife is uh, has the same mindset, yeah, so we yeah. have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. um, then, then you really create your uh, a very uh, relaxing environment. Uh, and when I play guitar, mm -hmm. it's very relaxing. And the thing is always to find uh, the switch. Mm -hmm. So I'm working 100% concentrated, yeah, and I try to, to get everything done by, by the evening, and then I switch it off. Okay, so how, how important is focus, like to be focused 100% so you finish the job, yeah, and then you focus 100% at home with your family yeah. or enjoying with your guitar and painting and all yeah. your passions? You don't think so, about work, you don't think about the problems you have, because if you take it with you into the family, 
they will be not solved mm -hmm. because you're not 100% in your solution process. The family will suffer because you think about your professional problems. So that's not the deal to do it. You really have to find a way to switch it off and to really uh, go into your private life, to, to go into your hobbies, to and for example, sports is, is a very important mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, run, I like running, I like swimming. I do ski touring in winter and mm -hmm. where we go up the, the hill, the, the mountains on the skis and then go down in the deep snow, powder snow. Mm -hmm. That's very, very good and it's very relaxing. And yeah, the most important thing is that you have to switch. Switching. switching. Hard switch. Say, okay, Job is job, privacy is privacy. Awesome. Okay, sometime I, I look into if I have to organize the, the, the computer runs, yeah. mm -hmm. then I go for five minutes in, 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 in my, my room uh, back home mm -hmm. and switch on the computer, just checking, okay, okay the computer is running, everything's fine, but then switch it off again. Okay, uh, which, uh, do you have like a special technique, for example, that you use during the day like, do you take chunks of time where you say I'm going to be 100% and then take five minute breaks? Or do you have a, your own system, let's say? I can do uh, three, four, five projects in parallel. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. And uh, the thing is the same, you have to switch. Yeah? You focus 100% on this, then probably you switch back to your mails, yeah, check your mails. Okay. And and you have to have really slots to do that. Okay. So I have three slots to check my mails. One slot is, is in the morning when I come into the office, I check my mails. First thing you do check First your things, I check my mails if there is something important. Mm -hmm. And then I go into the projects. Okay. And then before lunch it's the next slot. I go into the mails, I do some phone calls, whatever. Mm -hmm. So between 11 and 12. Okay. And then in the evening before I leave the office is, is the next slot. And okay. you have to do that very, very disciplined. Consequently. And yeah. Because disciplined. It's, it's even for your new case, it's really important to know what's going on, information, yeah. and be informed. Yeah. And you, you work with other people around the world, right? Yeah. And, and sometimes you have to call late in the evening because of the mm -hmm. time shift. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but this is this is really important that you strictly limit your electronical com communication mm -hmm. to certain slots. Okay. It makes no sense to to go into the internet every uh, fifteen minutes, or then you think, oh, I have to look up this in the internet, then I have to look up that in the internet. So you switch yeah. back and forth from project to internet to mail. You have to really yeah, be disciplined and, and put it to a certain slot. I think that's a great, great advice for people like me. I'm not a millennial because I was born in 82, but lots of people that maybe want to watch this interview are millennials. And yeah. Our generation, and millennials, so we are pretty addictive to social media. That's true. And internet, and then and we'll see another YouTube video. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a that's an amazing advice. So great. So uh, before we wrap it off, uh, what would you give as an advice to a young person that would like to come to this world of virtual reality and engineering? And what, what are the traits or the, what are the attitude that... The attitude is, yeah. is, is really to be uh, nosy, mm -hmm. to be really nosy, to, to want to know about everything, to know how things are working. The other thing is to be visionary, you have to have really your visions. And uh, you have to be interested in physics and maths. Yeah. If not... <laughs> No chance. You have to love, especially yeah. this field. You have to love. But but I I think uh, in our um, yeah today it's it's much more um, common to say oh science is something something strange it's it's uh, difficult uh, and I keep my fingers off yeah mm -hmm. and 
science not for me, maths not for me, physics not for me, uh, uh, all the, the natural sciences, I, I don't like it. Yeah? Uh, but some people, if, if they really don't listen to this mainstream, yeah. Yeah? Uh, and they really get in touch with natural sciences, they have a lot of fun with it and they, they all of a sudden they they experience that they they love maths and they love <laughs> physics yeah, and they really like it yeah, yeah. yeah? you have to really uh, sometimes you have to force yourself to look into the things before you judge anything before you decide anything yeah? you have to look into not just oh maths that's strange and I don't know, if, I don't care for formulas and I don't care for natural laws, yeah, I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And you can play around because uh, one and one is two, that's uh, for sure. Yeah? And, and you can play around with formulas and you can play around with physics and it's so interesting and, and you have such a lot of fun with it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you really uh, expose yourself Okay. You really have to expose yourself to this. And, and then you can say, I like it or I, I don't like it. Awesome. Would you like to share uh, where you're working right now? If somebody maybe is interested in your services and in your engineering? Well, I'm working right now in, in turbine design. I'm working in um, fire and smoke analysis. I'm working in VOF, that is volume of fluid where you simulate water flows, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things you could think about uh, where water or air flows. We work on heat exchangers, aircraft, automotive, machinery, mm -hmm. uh, even um, if you look at um, pollution, yeah? pollution propagation. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in, in the near field environment of, of plants and, and energy uh, uh, plant, power plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving frames, cars, it's a huge variety of projects we're working in. Awesome. Yeah. I really want to thank you one more time for this interview. You're very welcome. Thank you as well. I have one more, one more question. Yeah, please Did you free. enjoy it? I enjoyed it, yeah. It was really great. I think it's uh, it's uh, important to 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 bring this over to to especially to the young people. Yes. Yeah, because uh, a lot of young people today, I, I I experience that a lot of time. They are a little disorientated. They are not focused. They are, uh, don't know how to decide for the future. And so I think it's a very good yes. way to 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 let them know a hey, uh, we think about you and we would like to 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 give you some 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 hot points for your future thank you very much one more time Irvin. you're very welcome and thank you to the viewers and i'll see you in the next interview you. with the swiss made success stairway to excellence awesome great amazing <laughs>